Hi everyone and welcome to this new video of Stage Masters Live. Uh, today, uh, it's a very, very interesting video, at least in my point of view, uh, because we're going to talk about um, communication within the band. Not any type of communication, but this type of communication that will allow you to improvise up to 80% of your song. So we're not talking about improvisation, in, improvisation within the show. I'm not talking about improv improvising a solo in a song, but improv improvising the structure of your song. So for all the um, other people who love to go to jam sessions, jammers, or simply people who like to keep their songs fresh, new, and um, with always this kind of unexpected factor uh, within their show, oh, they're going to love that video. <laughs> so uh, what I want to start with is the fact that it's important to understand that it's impossible, absolutely impossible, to improvise the structure of a song without a great communication system. No matter what, it won't be possible. You need to have a great, great communication system. Uh, now, uh, just so that you imagine, if you are playing in a band um, and you don't know if you're going to get a solo yes or not, within the song and if you get one you don't know at all when it's gonna come up uh, you don't know um, anything about the structure of the song you better make sure that you really understand the whole communication system of the band every band can have a different communication system that's not a problem uh, you can build yours uh, I built mine uh, many bands I know who do the same type of things build theirs well some some signals they are so obvious that they will they will they will appear in in different bands, but uh, you can definitely uh, uh, create your own communication system. That's uh, as long as it works for you, that's good. Uh, what is important to know is also that <clears throat> in order to have this communication system well in place, you need to follow one leader. It doesn't need to be the leader of the band. Uh, it needs to be the leader, I would say, of the song. So I tend to follow the lead singer. Because I always think that the lead singer, as he's singing a song, is going to be the best person to actually uh, feel what structure will fit with whatever he's singing. Um, some see it differently. Uh, I used to play with a band where actually the lead singer, the only sign he, was, he would be giving is the fact that, okay, right now I'm stopping uh, uh, singing, someone take a solo. But who? There was no sign for that. So in that case, the, um, the, the one who was directing was another instrumentalist and he was the one who was uh, giving solos to the other instrumentalist, like, okay, now it's my turn, now it's your turn, etc., etc. That is simply uh, uh, to understand that you need to follow one person because if you think like, okay, uh, no, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to go now and let's see what happens, that will lead to chaos because if two persons think the same thing at the same time, it's over. And it does happen a lot. Um, the thing also when you uh, follow a, um, a leader is to uh, make sure that there are not several leaders in the band because um, I know some bands uh, which, uh, which I've played with uh, I know a band that I used to play with in Germany they had three lead singers which was really cool because they were all great lead singers and um, so what we're doing is simply that uh, we followed the simply the lead singer that was singing the song of the moment. So when we would go to another lead singer, we would follow that new lead singer, etc. It's easier that way than to always follow uh, one person that is that is not gonna be feeling the same things. Uh, it's my opinion. I know that some really prefer to it differently, but I always consider that the one who's leading the song in terms of uh, um, uh, the, the, the main emotions <clears throat> is the one who's gonna feel what needs to be done in order to enhance whatever he's actually uh, bringing up. Mostly for, for singers, because singers, they actually uh, uh, tell you about uh, uh, a story in the song and we are supposed to bring, to, to, to lift up that type of emotions to actually give a, a third dimension to, to, to that text. So in that case, I think that it's more than fair that the lead singer is the one who's going to um, direct the rest of the band. 
Uh, now, uh, there are also other situations. You can uh, play in a band that plays only instrumentals. So in that case, it's the same. I would use. Uh, I, I would prefer to. Uh, I would suggest to follow the the, the lead instrumentalist. He's going to be again the one who's playing the theme, the main theme, and he's going to be the one who's going to probably start the first solo. Who knows? But he's going to be the one who's going to feel what needs to be done to actually accentuate whatever has been the main theme that he's actually performing. So um, that's uh, how I would do it. But you can organize a different system as long as you know that who to follow. That's the most important thing. The rest is uh, more a matter of feeling. So uh, to come back to the communication system itself, um, as I was mentioning before, if you have a very very good communication system, and that every band is in, everybody in the band is in tune with that uh, communication system, you can improvise up to eighty percent of your structure. Uh, for example, uh, uh, my my former band in France was called the the, the Naughty Harps, and uh, um, I was the one directing uh, the structures of the songs because I, I'm the one who built the repertoire, so I knew exactly what I wanted in order to to give the best. And so, um, if another, for example, uh, a musician uh, would bring a song or an instrumental in the band then I would let him lead because he would be the one bringing uh, his own thing and he, he knows what needs to be done in order to bring the best out of it. Uh, so the communication uh, system uh, in itself, we're going to talk about it in a few minutes, but first uh, I want you to understand what I mean when I talk about 20% uh, of it of your song is going to be structured and 80% is going to be improvised. So what we knew was how to start a song, we knew uh, how to end the song, and in the middle we had uh, musical breaks and bridges ready to be played on the signal. So we knew that, okay, at that signal, boom, that needs to be played. At that signal, boom, something else needed to be played, etc. So then after the order, of appearance for the, the, the verse, the chorus, the break, the bridge, did not matter anymore. We just knew that with the right cue, we, we knew what to play. And sometimes the, the signals or the cues were not visual. It was within the song. Uh, you play a theme, etc. And at some point you change slightly the end of few notes, but those few notes are the cue that now something, uh, uh, another part of the song needs to be played. That uh, that uh, that was uh, pretty much um, unspottable for, uh, for for people outside of the band, but uh, it was uh, it was a uh, very interesting to to keep this uh, discreet. Now for the visual uh, codes, I advise them to be pretty much very very easy to spot. You don't want to make them that discreet that no one's gonna spot them and that is gonna go into a mess. So uh, what I uh, what I uh, want to do is to give you uh, maybe a, a few uh, a few of those codes so that you can use them yourself. Uh, you can create your own ones, of course. But uh, I'm going to give you some situations and uh, and tell you what code I was using. Uh, maybe it can be helpful for you. Already to uh, to distribute the solos, that was uh, that was pretty easy. In general, I would simply uh, stare at the person. Uh, and that w and and give a quick node that would be a sign to say okay that's that's your turn that's the most common one used. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, those bands that actually uh, uh, or let's say those musicians that play in bands that improvise the whole time, they feel like they have to be aware the whole time. Yes and no. You need to be aware the whole time on one uh, about what's going on on stage, but you don't need to stare at the at the director. Uh, of the song to to, to know uh, oh, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. No, you just play your thing, you enjoy yourself, you enjoy the band, you enjoy the music, the audience. But just right before the end of a verse, right before the end of a, of a chorus, or, or right before the end of a bridge, you give a quick, a quick look at the director to see if he's going to give a signal. If he's going to give a signal that gives a new instruction, you follow it. And then you go back to your thing until you finish one cycle and you just have a quick look again. You don't need to spend your time staring at that person. It's going to be useless and it's going to make you look un uncomfortable. You don't want that. 
Um, so yeah, a distribution of the solos, as I said, can be easy. It can be as simple as a as a quick note to the to the person who's going to be the the next one taking the solos, or it can be more obvious, like uh, uh, take it away and you name the the person, or you can uh, like this. That can be also part of the show, you know, part of the the stage act to make it uh, super obvious who's going to be the, the the next one. So you choose the way you want to to make it happen. It can be discreet or more obvious, it doesn't matter. As long as it fits the situation, the context of the song, uh, if it's like up-tempo, you know, like, a, take it away, that's a good one. But uh, of course, uh, if it's a, a super slow ballad, take it away. <clears throat> You're gonna have to choose your tone of voice to say it in a way that will look still, that will look still cool. So uh, those, uh, those are details that are pretty important in my opinion. Uh, now, for the visual codes, instead of not, not giving, uh, giving uh, out solos, but more uh, uh, the structure of the song itself. So, uh, I was using a few codes that were um, used uh, to, to give a special, speci specific, um, specific uh, instructions. So, for example, to give you one, uh, if I wanted uh, to repeat a verse, a second time, or or a, a, a chorus, I would simply uh, raise my finger and uh, and uh, make a loop like this, uh, a little circle that would uh, that would look like a loop. They would know uh, that they would have to repeat either the chorus if we were playing a chorus or the verse if we were playing a verse, or even a bridge if we were on a bridge. It doesn't matter. Uh, if it's on the solo of another musician, I would just do that, and he would know that he would have to continue with the solo that is not done yet. Uh, things like that uh, are are pretty easy. Um, in general, when it was uh, for solos, I used to prefer to tell the musician to build up his solos the way he wants and to give himself a cue or signal to say, okay, I'm done, a little bit before the end of his solo. Uh, like this, I give a freedom for the, for, the, for the instrumentalist to actually express exactly what he wants. Because uh, uh, if, if he tells me he's done and I tell him you continue, I take the risk that we are going to lose a lot in dynamics. So it was a code that we had, but I was never using because I really prefer to give freedom to the musician to structure his solo, the length of his solo, the way he feels uh, it's going to suit best. I trust the musician I play with, so that's, uh, that's how I prefer to do it. Uh, otherwise, if I wanted, for example, to repeat one part of the song ad libitum, so um, that was something that we do plan. So, okay, when we arrive at that part of the song, this needs to be repeated on and on and on and on and on endlessly. Then I, of course, to find uh, I had to find a signal uh, to tell them, okay, guys, it's time to end this. So in that case, I would simply raise my fist like this, tack, and turn it like this. They would know that okay, at the end of this cycle, we finish. We can uh, we can uh, we, we can call it a, a wrap, and uh, we can go to the to the rest of the song, or even end the song if it's uh, if it's towards the end of the song. So that is also an, an, an easy signal. Um, sometimes I also like to give, a, um, uh, to, I had a specific signal to, um, to tell people that I wanted to, uh, 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 to, um, to accelerate the tempo, you know, um, I wanted this to be accelerated, accelerated, so I had another signal for that, um, I would simply do the same loop thing, but I would do it quicker, then they would know that, okay, now we have to accelerate the tempo. Um, and uh, of course, uh, when I would stop doing this, they would know that they would be at the right tempo. And I would stop to signal that, okay, now we're at the right tempo. Uh, another signal that I was, um, another code that I was actually uh, giving was in order to, um, yeah, to, uh, to, uh, to go half tone higher. You know, like, uh, okay, uh, we play a song, I don't know, uh, in one key, and I say, okay, I want to, to, to go half tone higher. Then in that case, I would still use my finger, I have to go a bit backwards like this, but I would simply raise it up like this. And then, so I would do that a little before the end of whatever we're playing, uh, like a chorus, or the bridge, whatever. And then I would raise my, 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 uh, my index in the, up in the air. They would know that we would have to go half a ton higher. So all those, depending on what kind of improvisation you want to do, what kind of freedom you want to give yourself uh, in order to improvise, you can invent codes for all kinds of things. Um, 
and the more code you have the more possibilities you will have to uh to um yeah to 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 bring your song to a new level because the great thing about that is that it will keep your uh, your audience highly entertained because it will allow you to never play the song the same way same for you it will keep you entertained the whole time because your song will always be sounding like new and fresh improvised mostly so they will still recognize the themes everything will be recognizable simply the structure would be different uh, and that that is kind of cool you don't have to do that with all your song all your repertoire but you can choose a few songs where you can do that with and it will bring always kind of an extra to your show so um well i think um, i've said a, a max uh, a, a max i've said a maximum i could say in about 15 minutes or or a bit more now uh so basically i think that if you do that you uh, you give an extra dimension to your whole show improvising within a song is really a fantastic tool it is really great for all of you, for example, who are uh, jammers, you like to go to jam sessions, or your house band that uh, hosts some jam sessions, that is a great tool as well, uh, mostly for your house band, uh, because of course the the guests you're gonna you're gonna uh, welcome on stage probably not do, do not know your codes, but it will allow you to give to give a certain a certain freedom into the impro in, into the structure of your of the song. If you can do that, and if the musicians that actually are coming on stage are good enough to uh, be aware of what's going on and uh, pay attention to uh, to you guys, they will probably understand very quickly what is the communication system and and pick it up as well. So, um, well, I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, on the next video, we're going to talk about uh, a heavy part. Uh, it's going to be the communication with the audience. That's the other side of it. It's really cool as well. It's actually a big part of a uh, of uh, those videos from Stage Masters Live, the communication with the audience and how to play with them. There's going to be much more in uh, other videos. I'm going to start with this on the, on this next video, but there's going to be so much to tell that it's going to take quite some videos. Um, but uh, there's going to be one video that is going to be specific, especially for the how to play with the audience later on. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for watching this video and uh, hopefully uh, I'll see you very soon for the next video, which I think is going to be in about two weeks. Thank you very much and enjoy this one. Bye!